the Lord for his family. I don't have any announcements for this evening, so I'm going to go ahead and get into a prayer over our service. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for your protection, for your covering, Lord God, in our lives. We pray, Lord, that you would have your way, that you would get glory in our praise and in our worship, that you would have your way in the rest of the service as well. Have your way in our hearts and in our minds, Jesus. Let our hearts be good ground to receive your word. In Jesus' name, we pray that you would use the man of God as he speaks your word, that you would just flow through him, Lord God, that he would speak your word exactly as you intended in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord God, for every uh, need in the house this evening, for every need of those who are tuned in on the stream, we pray that you would touch and that you would provide in the name of Jesus. Amen.
Your presence is heaven to me. In all my days on earth, I will await the moment that I see you face to face. And nothing in this world can satisfy. But Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Cause Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Cause your presence is heaven to me. Your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you. I thank our worship team. His presence, just thinking about his presence, is heaven to me. Hallelujah. I, I'm going to surprise, I'm throwing a quick surprise. I'm going to Psalms right now. I just feel like the Lord laid this in my spirit. Psalms 18. 27 it has nothing to do with what I'm going to start with finishing up with teaching but the Bible says for thou wilt save the afflicted people but wilt bring down the high looks for thou wilt light my candle the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness for by thee I have run through a troop and by my God have I leaped over a wall as for God his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all those that trust in him. For who is God save the Lord, or who is a rock save our God? It is God that girdeth me with what? Amen. He's my strength and maketh my way perfect. I'm going to read down to uh, 43 sound. I'm sorry. So it is God that girdeth me with strength and maketh my way perfect. He maketh me feet like hinds feet and setteth me upon my high places. He teacheth me my hands to war so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation and thy right hand hath holden me up amen and thy gentleness hath made me great thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip thank you Jesus I have pursued mine enemies and overtaken them neither did I turn again till they were what till they were consumed. I have wounded them that they were not able to rise. Listen, when you go to prayer, when you and I go to prayer, that's where we fight our battles. That's where we begin to take, uh, take uh, weaponry and begin to pray it over against the things that are rising up against us, the, the, the challenges that we have going into prayer. That's how you wound the enemy when you pray. Amen. He's already told you he's given you that given you the ability to beat the enemy. Amen. It says, I have wounded them that they were not able to rise 
they have they are fallen under my feet for thou hast girt with again strength unto the battle thou hast subdued under me those that rose up against me being spirits being things of this world be it things uh, uh, that's going on around us right thou hast also given me the necks of mine enemies that i might destroy them that hate me they cried but there was none to save them even unto the lord but he answered them not then did i beat them small as the dust before the wind I did cast them out as the dirt in the streets thou hast delivered me from the strivings of the people and thou hast made me the head of the heathen a people whom I have not known shall serve me I'm gonna cause people to serve him there's going to be a day where they, the, the, the world will have to serve him. They will, either, they will either call him Lord or they'll deny him. One of the greatest needs for God's people and this world today is to have, the, have a connection to the Lord. We need a connection to the Lord. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Our, we, our greatest fear is losing connection not only with the Lord, but with one another as friends, as the body of Christ. We must not lose our connection. Since our greatest need for connection, when we feel like we're starting to lose connection the, uh, and getting distant between someone we love and really care about, then a primal fear sort of kicks in. And we can, we, we can do all kinds of dysfunctional things that really hurt the relationship and push it further apart. I, 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 you know, there was someone that left the church and I, I called them a couple times and uh, they, 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 if they actually said it, uh, a person came to me and said, you know, they feel like you're pressuring them. They feel like you're pressuring them. And not once did I was I pressuring them to come back to the house of the Lord? My concern was to find out, are they okay? But things in us, and things, things happen in us, and they, they cause us to think the worst of when, so, when a brother or a sister calls us. Hear me, if we did not care, we would not call. Amen. Amen. When we're feeling like we're losing connection because we have this fear of losing connection, we must know we are made for connection. And when we start to lose connection with someone close to us, then we start doing all kinds of things that come out in emotions. Right? Uh, for instance, sometimes when we feel like we're losing connections with friends, we'll you know, maybe reach out to them, call them, and, you know, we're like, hey, are you okay? What's going on? What, you know, where are, you know, we haven't seen you. What's going on? Are you coming by the house? Or, you know what I mean? Uh, we're going to get a cup of coffee. What's, you know, what's going on? And, and sometimes uh, that overwhelms them, and they become, uh, you know, they get into a place of uh, uh, feeling um, pressured and defense and they go on the defensive right and so all these things that are dysfunctional a lot of times and sometimes they you know depending on how we we handle things can be dysfunctional and sometimes they even destroy the relationship because we care so much believe it or not what we do to, is not to destroy the relationship it's because that's all we know to do to try to save the relationship be it friends, be it in, in the body of Christ, be it, be it a marriage. We, we do things, you know, uh, that can uh, become very dysfunctional. Um, if you really love someone, you really want to make sure the relationship is thriving. And sometimes when you start losing connection out of fear, you start doing things destructive, like calling them constantly or, 
or, or when you do get a hold of them, there's a, where are you? What's going on? Why, why aren't you returning my calls? Why aren't you returning my texts, right? And so there are things that we do that become very, uh, very hurtful, not meaning to be hurtful. But we need connection. That's what God's people need to understand. We're not calling. You don't call one another or you don't uh, follow up on, on, on your family, church family, because you want to hurt someone. You follow up on them because you care about them, right? Now, when, when I start getting no returns, no nothing like that, I, you know, you pretty much know they've done, you know, they're just ignoring you. They're not going to call you back or they're not going to do this, right? But the bottom line is I'm trying to talk about going from dysfunctional to a deep connection. This is our third series. We're talking about walking with the Lord, having good relationships in the church, having good friendship in the church, having good marriages in the church. All that is incorporated in having a connection to the Lord because if I'm not healthy in the house of God, I cannot be healthy in witnessing about the Lord. Amen? If I've got a problem with Brother Aaron and I, I, I uh, do not get it right and I'm, I start being dysfunctional in the way I treat him, I don't look at him or I don't talk to him or something like that, I'm not going to be healthy when I go out into the street to be a witness. Right? So it's imperative that my spirit is always right and it, and it takes prayer. I'll be the first to tell you, anybody that says, oh, I walk on, you know, I, I walk, I walk on clouds. I, I got this. I can. I love everybody. And sometimes I do love everybody. And then there's sometimes that I just don't. And I need Jesus. Nobody wants to be transparent today. But in life today, you can't, you know, you know, we went to Pennsylvania. And this goes back to the word love. And we went in and because I had, this is the second or third, fourth, fifth time we've been to this Italian restaurant in Pennsylvania probably one of the best Italian restaurants I've eaten at. Um, they don't have, they have great food. They can't serve you, you know, they can't serve you because it's a small, it's just ran by family. So they don't have a lot of waiters, waiters or wait, waitresses. And so we went in just because we, I don't know, I'm thinking it had to be Jesus, right? I, I'm just going to tell you it had to be Jesus. But by the time we had finished our meal, I walked out and I was going to buy dessert and the man said, no, here's dessert on us. And it was, it, it was all homemade cookies, chocolate chip cookies. He had cannolis. I don't know, y'all, I, I don't really care for cannolis. I care for the chocolate chip cookie, but my wife loves cannolis and things like that. And, and uh, uh, some other Italian um, sweets there. And so... Oh, when we were leaving, I just walked in and I said, I want to thank you. We love you all. Thank you so much. And I had Pastor Evie with me. He said, now I know why he gave us that free food, gave us the free dessert. You always tell him you love him. I said, how many, how many customers do you think he gets that says that, that he gets that will say that? That's the agape love, right? It's being able to show and share. And I said, God bless you and your business. He was like, man, thank you. God bless you, right? And so, but, but you, if, you walk, if you walk with the right mindset, if you walk with the right ideas of, of, of being Christ-like, then you will always, God will always come out somewhere. And then you will find blessings that you were never even expecting. And I'm like, no, let us pay for that. He said, oh, no. Oh, no. I want to bless you all, right? And that was before I even came out and, went to the agape man we love you thank you and so i, I think uh brother and sister thompson have been there if i'm not mistaken um i think i sent brother uh bovell and his wife there uh but the food is the food is is very good um so you you got good intentions most of the time we have good intentions but it's really destroying the relationship you start watering it your way you start trying to fix it and make it sure, make sure that it's right, and it's, and we're ending up sinking the relationship. You know, we we don't, we're not putting in the relationship what we should. And so, I, I want to share with you five simple but not simplistic, simple but deep truths 
They are simple, but they're deep truths that are going to change everything. And remember, the real issue is fear of losing connection. Okay? Losing connection. In 1 John 4, 18, it says, Such love has no fear because perfect love expels all fear. If we are afraid, it is for... That's okay. So, if we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment, and this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love. Now, uh, I have to tell you, we must experience his perfect love. His love is perfect. It's not tainted. It has no agenda. It's strictly I love. He loves us with all his heart, all his might, or he wouldn't went to the cross. Amen. And so in our flesh, we do have fears. And sometimes our flesh just triggers these fears because our relationship is so important. We care so much. And we have this deep fear of losing connection because we, had, we were created for connection. We as God's people were created for connection. And I will get into that in the very next uh, session, uh, 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 ver uh, number four, uh, our last one. And when, when that fear rises up, a lot of times uh, we do dysfunctional things which hurt the relationship. And, and God's love can cover all that and all those fears if we allow it. But we have to allow it. Right? We have to allow. Um, James 4, 1 in the Amplified Version said, What leads to strife, discord, and feuds? And how, to, how do conflicts, quarrels, and fightings originate among you? Do they not arise from your sensual desires that are ever warring in your body members? Listen, the Message Bible says it like this. Where do you think all these appalling wars and quarrels come from? Do you think they just happen? Think again. They come about because you want your own way and fight for it deep inside yourselves. So what I've come to find out is if I'm going to follow after Jesus, I can't follow him after my way. I can't follow him. I can't follow after him the way I the way my carnal mind says follow after Jesus. Because if I follow after him in the flesh, I, I'm quickly going to fail. I'm quickly going to be a uh, 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 hurt and stay hurt because that's what I'm created to do. I'm created to feel feelings. I'm created to have feelings, and I'm created to be hurt by people. And you are too, right? But it comes to a place that he was hurt by family. He was hurt by the followed him. He was hurt in the garden at, at prayer time when they could not even stay awake one hour and pray with him. But yet he still loved them, right? And so if it's not something new that we get hurt. Right? And we become angry or wounded and just decide that we're going to walk away. It's natural. That's the natural instinct of what happens to God's people because it happened to, to the Lord. It happened to Jesus. And so we should not be uh, uh, caught off guard when we're wounded. We're going to be wounded. We're going to be hurt. And what happens is I become dysfunctional if I cannot be healed from the hurt. I go back to many years ago. I guess it would have been 05, 06, somewhere in there, maybe 07, somewhere in there where um, you know, there were some, there were some people in the church. They said I was unlearned, uneducated. They couldn't sit under me. Uh, since Bishop, you know, the church voted me in. And so they said that to my face. It took six weeks for me to heal and be delivered. 
from them kind of words being spoke. Knowing I was called by God. Thank God Bishop was here because I just said, I sat right there where Brother Aaron's sitting. I come in on Sunday mornings and didn't want to talk to nobody. I sat right there. He preached after altar call. I got up and I left. Six weeks I came in and out of this church. Six weeks he had to preach. On the sixth week, God broke the spirit of those words. The Holy Ghost fell like never before. The hurt that was there from those words were healed. Those words did nothing but empower me after that. It caused me to be more prayerful. It caused me to be more in the word of God. It caused me to, to understand that there are going to be hurts in the church. There's going to be wounds. And any church you go to, I don't care what church you go to, you're going to get hurt. By somebody. Thank you, Bishop. And so deep down, we have this fear of losing connection. And so we fight for it. But we do it in all the selfish ways, right? All these unproductive ways that hurt the relationship. In marriage and in families and friendships, conflict is a good thing if it's constructive conflict. Amen? For it to be constructive conflict, that takes you deeper. But you have to be able to go deeper to be able to go through the constructive conflict. What happens is, is we go deeper in the love of Jesus and we learn how to maneuver and work through the things of the conflict that's going on. Be it in friendship, be it in marriage, be it in children, be it in the church, be it in ministry, whatever it is, we learn to work with it and then God heals us over it and we move forward. For it to constructive conflict, that it will take you deeper, you have to remember that your greatest fear is losing connection, and that's the root issue. That's the root issue, and so you fight for the connection. Because you want connection. We are made to have connection. You'll fight to get your way because you'll think the problem is if they just change. If he just talked more, if she just explained herself more, if he really saw me and saw what was going on in my life, if he really, if, if he really knows my problem, or if she would just change, or if she would just change the way she acts, or if she would have at least come and talked to me, or if he would have just come and talked to me, right? Uh, we stop, you know, if she would stop or if he would stop demanding so much of me. Uh, you know, we start focusing on the surface issues and we instead, and, in, and then we begin to fight. Because we're looking at all the things on the surface. We haven't went deep enough. We haven't prayed. We haven't sought the face of God to deal with the real root of the issue. And most of the times, the real root of the issue is spiritual. Because spiritually, I'm not connected like I need to be. I haven't been praying like I need to be. I haven't been, listen, if, if Jesus was able to walk around with 12 dysfunctional disciples that he knew was going to leave him or deny him, certain amount, right? If he had a, no, it, you know he knew it. And he knew when he went into the garden to pray, that they were going to go to sleep on him. He, it didn't catch him off guard. That's why he gave them the choice and the opportunity. He said, look, guys, y'all just stay over there and pray. I'm going right over here. Because he knew it would distract him because of the dysfunctional of, of them not being able to stay awake and pray. So he went over here to pray so he wouldn't be distracted, right? Hearing the snoring and all, all the whatever you do when you're sleeping over there on the other side of the garden, right? Then he gets up and he walks over to the other side and he goes, Did I, couldn't you, could you not have tarried with me one hour? Come on, get up and pray with me. So just as Jesus has dealt with dysfunctional people and, and, and things that have hurt him, we've got to learn to deal with that. 
We need a connection to him. If they would have had a better connection, they would have never fell asleep on him. Right? With my connection, I must stay connected to the Lord or my marriage will be dysfunctional. More than what it ever could be. And I'm not saying it's dysfunctional, but I'm just saying because we all have dysfunction. We do things dysfunctional. Right? I brought out all the Bible characters that had dysfunctional things in their life. So anybody that denies that there's no dysfunction in their life, there's something wrong. I'm in denial is what I am. If I say not me, I'm perfect. Right? I'm perfect. Y'all might be dysfunctional, but I'm not. Well, maybe you aren't, but I am. And I know that I need Jesus to help me. I know I need Jesus to heal me. I know I need Jesus to make me a better person. I know that I need Jesus to heal my mind and my spirit so that I might walk this walk without walking around offended all the time, right? And so uh, uh, we need to focus on going deeper with Jesus, not staying at the surface. I talked about, you know, scuba diving, you have a snorkel. You don't have a tank on your back. You don't have a, 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 snor a, 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 a regulator in your mouth to go deep. You only had the snorkel. You could take a deep breath. You can go down, but you can only stay down for a little bit, and then you got to come back up to get a breath of air. But when you put on the tank, the mask, and the regulator in your mouth, and the BC on you, you can go as deep as your tank will allow you with the amount of air that's in that tank. And the Lord is wanting to take the church deeper because there's folks that are going to come into this church there's folks that are going to come into this church that needs to see love. They are dysfunctional just like I am, and they need to see the love of Christ in us. They need to see that when they walk in here, we are, we're supposed to be Christ-like. I think so, right? I would say we're supposed to be Christ-like. Well... What did Christ do when you walked into the building? I can tell you what he did. When my babies go like this, whoo, that makes me feel good, right? But this is what Jesus did. I, I'm, I can tell you, when you walked into this building, he was like, oh, yeah, y'all come unto me. I know you got some heavy laden. I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to give you joy. I'm going to give you peace. You just come on unto me. I'm going to heal the brokenhearted. I'm going to mend everything that you've been going through today. I, I, I'm going to restore that which the canker worm has destroyed. I'm going to bring life, Jesus said. You just come unto me. I'm excited that you came to the house of the Lord. I'm glad you came to the house of the Lord. Great. He's like, I bet if, if Jesus, I'm surmising, I imagine he's probably going, whoa, man, look at my children. These are my children that are sold out. So really, we have only two ways of protecting ourselves and holding on to our connection with those we love when we feel unsafe and like we're starting to disconnect. The first way is to withdraw. Withdraw. How many have seen that in relationships? Friendships. I've seen it in marriages. I've seen it in friendships. I've seen it in ministry i've seen it in everything I, I i saw it in sales i i've seen it in chick-fil-a we withdraw we go the other way we don't want to really get connected we don't want to talk i don't want i don't want to see him i don't want to say nothing to him i just want to we disconnect right and so devoid conflict and conversation are about deeper things and and, and we try to numb our emotions we shut down. We try to deny our connection to them. We need connection because we don't want to hurt. So we just kind of shut it down and bury it deep inside where it's not really. That's what happened to me when I was molested and, and raped, right? I buried it so deep so that my emotions and I was numb to them. When people with families came to me and said my children were, were molested and raped. And I would tell them, well, we need to get someone that's more educated to counsel you, more equipped to counsel you. Because I knew that if I started dealing with that, 
Then I had to deal with me. What happened to me? And obviously I was not ready for that. Until God made me ready for that. The second way is to listen to fear and the anxiety as it builds up in us and, uh, that, that fights for the response, fight for a reaction, uh, fight to be seen, attack the person, attack so they react. In most couples and friendships, they don't even see it. Uh, see, it all comes out in fear because they're about to lose connection. So I'm dealing with this person, right? I'm dealing with this person. I'm dealing with a married person, right? And so one of the persons in this relationship has left. And so the one keeps doing things to try to get him back, which creates, which has created even more issues. Major issues. Because what, ha what has to happen right now is everybody needs to step back and pray. That's really what everybody needs to do right now, right? But what we do as humans, we try to figure out how to fix it. Can't nobody fix brokenness. You can't fix it. I can't fix it. Only Jesus can fix it. I can't fix hurt. Only Jesus can fix hurt. Right? Relationships that are broken cannot be fixed by you or me. But God can fix it. We know that. I am a, perf I am a walking testimony of God being able to fix broken relationships. And he will do it for everyone. It's not just he did it for me. He'll do it for anyone. In most couples and friendships, they don't even see it. They don't see the, that it's coming to where it's coming to. And that's why you need to know the second thing uh, is to recognize the disconnection dance. Because there's a dance that goes on, and it goes on with parents, teenagers, and it goes with friends, and on in the workplace. Recognizing that disconnection dance. It creates distance. It, go, it goes it, it goes on in marriages all the time. It goes on in friendships and those that are in leadership. This disconnection dance that happens, it, it, it becomes a spiral and it will distance a relationship. And usually the way it works is that when you feel like you're losing connection in a close relationship, you start to feel a distance coming. One reaches out in a negative way and the other person steps back. Anybody experienced that in a friendship, marriage, children, all the above? All the above, right? I've said some things to the children and immediately we become distance again, right? Say things to a friend and then we become distant. So, so one reaches out in a negative way and the other person steps back. One attacks with emotions, the other withdraws with emotions and protects itself in a way. Right? We, we, we think we're protecting ourselves by withdrawing. And in all actuality, what we need to do is confront it in a right way. Right? Sometimes I just, I just got to pray so that I can confront it. Because if I don't pray, what I found is, is then I react in my flesh. And when I, when I act in my flesh, most of the time, you're going to get hurt. Verbally. Not physically, but verbally. Right? Maybe you all don't, maybe you haven't experienced that. But sometimes my mouth will pop off if I haven't brought, brought that tongue the fiery tongue, the tongue I can't control, but through the power and the glory of the Holy Ghost, if I can't control it, I will say some things. And some of it becomes because we're a close family. We've been together for a while, and, you know, that sometimes makes it even worse because now we feel like I have the right to say something to you. Right? Sometimes I feel like 
it, I'm going to say it and everything's going to be all right. Isn't that the way we think as family? We can walk in the room, say, son, I don't like the way that looks. You shouldn't be doing that. Stop it. And it'd be done. Right? But he's over there smoldering. He's angry. Right? Daughter. I said, don't do that. And now she's all smoldering and hurt. When what she should say is, why do you say I should stop doing that? Why do you say that? And why do you say it like that? Right? Then I can go, well, this is why. And she could go, well, you hurt me. And I could go, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Right? If I don't, because you told me I hurt you, now it's on me and Jesus. Because you gave me the opportunity to say, look, forgive me. But when you don't give me the opportunity to say, forgive me, it's on you. Because I don't know that I did something. Same with friendship, same with uh, 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 marriages, same with leadership, same with Friends, all this stuff, all that matters in our walk with God. So one attacks with emotions, the other withdraws with, uh, with, uh, with emotions and protects it in that way. And, and then the way everyone to know that, you know, then everybody wants their side to be known. This is the hardest thing for a pastor because the pastor can't get his way. He can't tell you about everybody. He's not allowed. But the saints can say, ah, pastor did this and pastor did that. And they can talk, they can call you and say things. But pastor can't defend that. So, so yeah, please, thank you. Pray for me. Because it's one of the hardest things to do. Is to sit here and allow people to say what they want to say. But the tr and not be able to tell the real truth. They tell you what they want to know. They don't tell you what they really did. Let's face it, right? Nobody wants to be the bad guy, so they make the bad guy. And most of the time, it is not the pastor, I promise you. Because if it is, I'm going to make it right. I'm going to ask you to forgive me. But, but, but we, we go on an attack. We, we, we try to get a reaction and, uh, uh, that, that most people would draw. And the best way that they can withdraw is to leave instead of dealing with what's going on. Which is, most of the time, it's in us. Or in me. Right? I'll just say it like that. Right? And so the scripture tells us this. All the studies now and all the psychological studies show that it is so destructive in a friendship relationship or a marriage relationship, especially when you get stuck in the cycle because you're just on the surface level and it is, it's an emotional response coming out because of your fear of losing connection. And Dr. Sue Johnson says, and, and Kenneth Sandifer, Sandifer in the, their book, Created for Connection, it says, when we get no emotional response from a loved one, we are wired to protest, to protest. It all, it's all about trying to get, get a response because of the fear of losing connection. I'm going to show you in the very next lesson that we go into what happens when you do not show friendship and connection to someone. It is very, it will blow your mind when I show you. People need People, you know, these masks have hurt us now. We can't smile at each other. And I like, I like seeing smiles. I mean, smiles help me through the day. I don't know how it does, what it does for you. Smiles help me through the day. Even if I don't get it on the street, smiles in the church helps me, right? So uh, I pray that you understand where we're going. So, you know, sometimes partners will actively protest They'll demand that, and they'll criticize, they'll attack you until you finally leash out. Friends will attack you 
and push you till you finally reach the edge and not able to hold on. Children will push you right to the edge till you can't control what you're about to say. Because that's, we're looking for a reaction because we want connection, be it good or bad. Be it good or bad. Everything goes out of the marriage relationship and the friendship that we have. One, one is fearing losing connection and needing emotional support. And so they start attacking and poking, prodding, and criticizing, and they're doing everything because they're worried about miss losing connection. And you go, well, how? That don't make sense. Well, most children that don't get any attention will do anything to get attention, be it negative or positive. Don't show a child any attention, and he'll get in trouble, so you have to go see him or her. Right? They'll act up and you're going, and now they would rather have something than nothing. And that's the same way with God's people. Uh, I'm sorry to say that. We need connection with one another. We need, that's why it's so imperative that the church be the house of God that we come to every Sunday and we come to on Wednesdays for connection so that we connect with one another, so that we know one another, so that if I, if, if I offend my brother, if I offend Reverend McNeil, that I go, hey, Rev, um, please forgive me. I, I, you know, he can go, hey, Pastor, you hurt me. You slighted me or, you know, you, you, you did this and you did that. And if he doesn't come regular, there's no connection between him and I. You call prayer and he don't show up, there's no spiritual connection. You know why? We, we're going to go back to prayer too. Because the church needs prayer. The church needs it in these last days. But it happens all the time. But we have to break out of this as God's people. We have to break out of these things that, that sink relationships. And, and so how do you break out of it? Well, if you are an, an attacker and, and you let me know, let me know, just say this. You'll say, hey, look, you've hurt me. I'd rather you be an attacker and tell me I've done something than to sit back and withdraw. It may be a, a wrong way, but at least I know, right? In a relationship, we, got, we need to know. And, and if I've got my right mind, the most time, I can't say it's always right. I might react back, right? Most of the time, I try to hold my tongue until I could spend some time in prayer, you know, and, and have, the, have a right mind so that when I do talk about it, I don't come out and just take the sword step back so that I got good balance and cut you up, right? And so with withdrawing, it just feels like nothing. You know, we're, we're, we withdraw and it just feels like nothing. And so now uh, we're going to, to go and say this. Usually, see, a lot of times we blame it on the woman. Uh, who is the one? I think it, you know, we go, well, I think it's the woman that started it, or I think this and I think that. I'm going to give you a compliment, ladies, though. One of the things I appreciate, appreciate about uh, my wife is she lets me know if something don't feel right, don't look right, right? Sometimes if it don't look right, feel right, I just might not say nothing. But she has that, the, the woman has that uh, God-given talent and gift to realize there's there's something wrong, and they'll go, hey, uh, buddy, you need to talk about this. I feel such and such, or I see such and such, and I think we need to talk about this. And so, ladies, I give you a compliment. Amen? Amen. Most women seem to be a, a little more in tune when connections are being lost or disconnected, right? So they recognize it quicker, and so... A lot of times they reach out and go, hey, I see something happening. And maybe doing, sometimes they may not do it the right way. Right? And so if you are an attacker, if you attack, pat yourself on the back because at least someone is trying to keep that relationship connected. I'm not, I'm not saying 
It's the right way. But I'm saying at least someone's trying to keep the connection. Right? Because if both of you just did not say anything, here's what happens. Friendships are broken. We no longer are good friends anymore. Right? Marriages are broken because now we don't discuss anything anymore. Our relationship as leaders or brothers and sisters in Christ, are, it, when it's broken and we, don't, and we don't discuss it, then it becomes broken. And it creates people exiting. And so, um, I'm not saying it's the best way, but the Bible says in Colossians 3.8, but now put off all such things as anger, rage, malice, slander, abusive language from your mouth. God wants us to change. He wants us to learn how to operate. If you're a withdrawer, and by the way, as I just said, my wife, she knows if I start to withdraw. She knows if I start to disconnect. And she says, we need to talk. It's very important that you have someone that's saying, hey, we need to talk. But if you're, if you're a withdrawer, don't pat yourself on the back. Okay? Because Ephesians 4.26 says, go ahead and be angry. You do well to be angry, but don't use your anger as fuel for revenge. And don't stay, stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. It's saying don't withdraw. We cannot withdraw. Amen? And I'm going to stay right. I'm going to stop right there. We cannot withdraw. We cannot withdraw. I'd like to ask our musicians to come. Um, I probably have one more Wednesday with this lesson, and we'll move on to the next lesson, and it'll be my last series. Um, but I want to encourage you that um, to um, understand that we need one another. We need one another. I need you, right? I need I need the body. I, the whole purpose God created us was to need each other. And when I go into the fourth lesson, which I'm going to give you a bit of a small snippet of it, Adam and Eve had great connection until sin came in. They walked with the Lord. Everything was at their fingertips. The animals were obedient to them. I mean, you know, can you imagine walking through the garden and a lion and you have control over that lion eating you? No, shut your mouth. Right? Giraffes. Elephants. All the animals, right? They had authority over them until they broke the relationship connection by taking part of something, just one small thing that they were supposed to stay away from. One. And it broke the connection. I don't want my connection between you and I or the Lord to be broken. Amen. Amen. There's too many people, listen, there's too many people that need the Lord. Totally. And this may be boring to you. This whole lesson may be completely boring. But I got news for you. There are people dying and going to hell that need us to be right. Mentally, physically, and spiritually. Relationship-wise, we need to be healthy so that we can be what we need to be for, to this world. Amen. Worship with us as we close. Thank you for being with us online. Thank you for being with us in the house of the Lord. May the Lord richly bless you when the worship is over, service is over, and you're dismissed in Jesus' name. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday morning. God bless.